Merry Christmas, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Christmas Day, December 25th, 2022, after 3 p.m. Eastern. Obviously, we have a lot of, of high frequencies uh, happening on the planet, and, and, and the majority, we'll put it that way. There's always, you know, people that are um, struggling, unfortunately, um, not too happy. Uh, but I believe that for the majority of the planet, uh, that the massive amount of high frequencies are emitting, and, and I don't, I don't think that many people understand that that how it affects every one of us since the, the gods within these bodies are omnipotently powerful supreme beings that never die. So we have this, when we project out from our hearts, and usually this time of year, that's what we do. We, we, we send out through our hearts. We're not in the ego mind. You, you ever notice that? Uh, you know, and it's my belief that that's going to continue. Now, you imagine that even more so on this planet, and, of course, we have different times, you know, in certain parts of the world. It's, you know, Christmas is winding down. It's nighttime into the, uh, the Monday, okay? But just for a moment, and I know everyone feels this vibrational frequency, and, and it's coming from the God that we are in these bodies. It's not something that is once in a while. It's an experience for all of us to understand that it's the God emitting these high frequencies. It's like everybody goes into a choir of high frequencies and begins to sing. And this bathes the planet. Uh, this is not, you know, and it doesn't really matter um, you know, this day, uh, you know, that, that uh, you know, there's a lot of, you know, Jesus wasn't born on this day and all that. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It could be every day. And eventually on this planet, it will be every day. And this is, now this is very different than ever before on this planet. This is the primer, the beginning of the civilization, more and more so, of going within, embracing the gods that they are. Uh, you know, when, when we give, uh, we're not, maybe, mostly, we're not really expecting things or have attachments to them. You know, you might, you might buy something for a boy or girl or an adult, and you're hoping that they're going to like it. But you just, you give it because you want to give it. Whether they like it or not, that's up to them. Uh, not up to you or any of us. And that's just a gift. But the biggest gift for all of us is to love ourselves and each other. Not, you know, and I know it's difficult for us at times because we're visual beings in these bodies. And so when we, we judge, it's almost, we judge others by their appearance, the clothes, the weight factor, you know, where they come from, what they do. Uh, and we, we're, none of us are exempt from that. You know, we've all done that in our lifetimes. It isn't a negative. It is a discovery that we begin to realize is that, hey, this person, there's a God in that body. That's what I look at. You know, we all know when we look in the baby's eyes, we see the light. And it isn't a reflection. See, I think a lot of people believe it's a reflection. Oh, it's the lights in the bathroom reflecting in my eyes. No, it's not. When you look into that little tiny black hole in the mirror and you see that light in there, it's in there. The eyes aren't mirrors. That goes way deep inside beyond the actual biologic of the eye. And that spark in there that you see is the God within you. That's why we ask people to, uh, it, they choose on their own. It's no, not a forced thing. They decide through their heart and mind that they're going to look at the God that they are through their eyes. And every one of us can do that. And no matter how strange some of us may feel doing that or guilty or, you know, silly, 
it, but you get into it and you start doing it a lot and you start looking into those eyes and you say, there's the God that I am. There's the light. So uh, it's a discovery. It's like step back, observe without judgment, be unconditional, watch now as obstacles melt, become no thing, right? Nothing, no thing. Do this each time a block appears. Step back and observe without any judgment, Babaji. We've all heard, I know every one of you have heard at one time or another, the, the term Akashic Records, right? And many, many have interpreted those in different ways. Uh, they're like entertaining the subconscious mind of God, which contains all the information in this universe, past, present, and future. This collective unconscious spiritual database of information and knowledge can be instantly accessed by anyone who knows how to do it. Believe it or not, with the right training, intention, patience, and purpose, all of us can open the door and enter this amazing hall of knowledge anytime. Some people say, well, I don't have that ability. Yes, you do. It's built in. You have that ability. You're the God. See how we've been trained? You see how things have you know, kind of skewed everything. So we believe that we, oh, no, I can't. You know, I have to learn all this stuff, and I got to get real technical about it. No, that's just, that's just all garbage. Now, the term Akasha, A-K-A-S-H-A, comes from a 5,000-year-old Sanskrit, which is very old language, a 5,000-year-old Sanskrit language, which means hidden library. That's what Akasha means, hidden library. The secret hole of information called, they call it, other things other than Akashic records, right? So you say the hidden library. Can be revealed by diving into the subconscious mind in a deep state of meditation. The quantum physics of this world have found the Akashic Kasha is an actual subatomic quantum energy field of information which can be found within everything in this universe. Phenomenal, isn't it? Sitting at our fingertips, all of us, every one of us, it's just that we have not been educated, we haven't educated, been educated to do this. It's very exciting to know that's what we will be doing. We will be going into this hidden library and we will discover the universe and all its parts and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. What is it really? It is the library of the God existence and beyond. When we are connecting with this subconscious highway, we have access to all sorts of information about all people and all things. Perhaps the Akasha may be better understood in this day and as an internal world Google browser for the universe where we can ask any question and ask, access the answer we need. Any question. You imagine that? We have that ability. To access it and whatever you most need to know about yourself the world or anybody else or thing can be discovered through entering the Akashic records the hidden library and one of the first steps is learning how to bring your mind into a total stillness and silence a quiet, empty mind is essential for new information to enter. One must stop all efforting in the outer world, let go of all your attachment and avoidances, and look deep within for the hidden library to reveal itself. 
when we are truly empty of all thought, this universe has no other choice but to fill that void. Best of all, there is nothing more amazing than bathing in the infinite river of cosmic consciousness. It is all of our very nature. In other words, in other words our natural state of being. When our minds merge with the mind of God, we are discovering the subconscious connection to our souls. We are able to pull up specific information about our soul's journey and mission that can bring a profound state of peace into our lives. It is our innate ability to dive into the subconscious mind so that we can heal ourselves from past karmas and societal conditioning. That keeps us living in a small, limited version of who we all really are. When we receive the messages that our soul is most trying to communicate to us, it instantly opens up more enlightening passages in how we think, perceive, and experience ourselves and this world. Enlightenment happens the moment we have dropped the illusions about who we are and step into this vast, unlimited self that is the truth of our infinite being. Our ego is creating obstacles, maya creating maya, Babaji. The easiest time to enter this hidden library awareness is just before we wake up in the morning. We are already in between worlds, so we merely set the intention to remain in this infinite gap. Through much practice of meditation, we can bridge this gap and read what's in this massive informational data bank. This massive informational data bank. Without losing consciousness, when we step beyond the incessant desiring mind and into the freedom of pure silence we can hear see and feel this information as if god herself were whispering to us now we have a a a, a guided meditation with specific instructions to help all of us into the hall of records, the hidden library. The information that we will experience on our hidden library meditation journey or Kashic meditation journey can really truly be life-changing. We can discover our soul's path, mission, and destiny. Now, some people might be a little hesitant on this, right? Because the unknown to some is scary instead of adventurous, instead of curious. We can understand how to have access to this divine database at all times in our lives. We can discover how to be ultimately, intimately connected to the universal mind and receive an answer to any question that arises through our subconscious mind. It's like it's like tuning into a special radio station from a certain universal channel, right? We remember the radio and we'd dial it and uh, get a station, get into the clearest signal. It is an opportunity of a lifetime, all of us, to find out the information that our souls most need to know and hear. All of our problems in this life stem from not knowing the truth of who we really are and embracing that truth. When we realize how powerful we are, we stop worrying 
we stop living in fear, like so many do on this planet. And being overly attached to fears that arise in the busy mind. When we find how simple it is, and it really is simple, to take a drive on this divine informational highway, we will discover a profound peace inside. And we, as we will understand how to liberate our minds from any problems or blocks we are facing. So you understand that it all starts with a simple meditation and focusing on the now which moves us out of and beyond the mind. We don't have to do anything else, right? You focus on understanding, and you, those that want to visualize it, you can visualize a hall, a massive hall, when you're in this meditation mode where you're silent. You have left the mind alone. You're in the now, and you're listening to your breath. And you visualize this hole. And it's, it's the largest hole you have ever experienced. And then down, you go down this hole, and on both sides and above you, there seems to be volumes and volumes and volumes of material. You could say books, charts, tablets, you name it, all there. And you walk, and there's this grand door that you come to. And as you come to the door, it opens automatically, as if it disappears in front of you. And then you walk into this massive, it seems like it's unending. It seems like it's larger than this universe. And everywhere is filled with all of this information. And you can visualize it as books and leather-bound books and copies of this and charts and maps and everything. Endless. And any time you choose in this meditation, you can pick up the book, you can look at it and read and review this or have a, a star chart that appears right in front of you. You can have holographic imaging in front of you anything you wish to access this information. Your lifetimes, of the, the, the many physical forms that you've inhabited for tens and twenties and thirties and hundreds and millions of years. And that's, that's the truth. All of us, you say, oh, no, you're a young soul. You haven't been around long enough. That's crazy. Because all of us have been around beyond forever. Right? And this is, this is meant to be, guys. We're supposed to be able. This shouldn't be the secret hidden library, but it's because how we have been trained to believe, how we've been trained to believe, right? How it sidetracks us. What we believe, we create. That's how powerful we are. Somebody creates a religion on the planet. If enough of us follow that religion and believe in that religion and devote ourselves to religion, that religion, we will create it. Everything we focus on moves into form, is created into reality, and we experience it. So all of these things are coming down, so to speak, like the access to the Great Hall, the Hidden Library. And everybody talks about that. How do you access that? Right? You practice the meditation. You practice a simple form of meditation. You don't go into heavy hieroglyphics and everything. You know, because it can get very confusing for people. And it can become disruptive. So the simple form of meditation is not meant to conflict or confuse one. It is to embrace oneself in the silence. It's the silence that brings us to the Great Hall. That's what it is. We may ask questions, right? 
that each of us have that we haven't been able to find the answer. And then when we enter the great hall, the hidden library, we find it. It comes to us. Okay? And do you understand that we have this access 24-7, eternity and beyond? It's our database. It's what we access to understand things about ourselves. And we see then, and this is, remember, it's heart-mind. It's not our heads and ego-mind. But we understand it is an opportunity of a lifetime to find out the information that our souls most need to know and hear. You ever had that feeling that, and I know that we all have at certain times in these lifetimes, there's something more I'm missing. I don't know what it is. I really can't put my finger on it, but through my heart mind, there's something that isn't complete. There's something that I, I should be able to know or access, but you know, you know, you ever had, you ever had that feeling where you can't put your finger on it? but you know you have the, the vibrational frequency of it. That's what this is. All our problems in this life stem from not knowing the truth of who we really are. All of them. And when we do discover how powerful we all are, then we stop worrying then we stop living in fear and being overly attached to fears that arise in the busy mind. And then we find out how simple it is to take a drive on this divine informational highway. And then we will discover a profound peace that's always been there, always will be there, ever beyond and forever, inside of all of us as we will understand how to liberate our minds from any problems or blocks we are facing. Pretty slick. And then understanding that every one of us affect everything around us. Anybody on this planet, every bit of peace and self-discovery. When you're happy, you affect you and everyone and everything around you. This has absolutely been discovered. It is an absolute fact. It isn't even debatable or arguable. So then what do you do? Then you begin to realize, I, I, I choose to leave my mind alone. And I choose to go into peace. And I know how to do that. All of you know how to do that. We've been doing these meditations now almost five years, nonstop, seven days a week, every Christmas, every holiday, all of it together, brothers and sisters. And we're affecting everything on the planet. Right? So... And we all, we all, we all, the ego mind every now and then comes in and gives us doubt, gives us fear, gives us anxiety, gives us self-analysis, self-judgment, self-ridicule. And these are all illusions. It's like right now on, in, in, across this country on Christmas Day, the day of deep gratitude, the day of self-love, self-healing, the day of joy, happiness, peace. And when you go into that place or space, we all have it within, all the, all the stuff, all the gifting, it's fun, right? Yeah, it is. But the true peace that each of us house in these bodies is when you just sit back, 
you go into this meditation and you're in, in, you're in deep gratitude for you to begin with. You're deeply grateful to have the body that you have, to be in it. You're deeply grateful that you have been able and you're beginning to discover that you are a highly supreme, omnipotently powerful being that never dies. You are the God. You are the pure consciousness. Every one of us are. So then what does that, what does that give you? You, begin, you? Everything melts away, right? The bodies melt away. The stuff melts away. The physical material world melts away. And we're all revealed as the gods that we are. And, and maybe some of us may think, how in the heck can we affect everything around us? It's real easy to understand that. Every one of us, wherever we focus our attention, our energy, it, it is created. It could be a slight thought passing that you pay attention to. You can dismiss it and melt it away, or you can let it go and begin to form into reality. That's why on this day on, on the, in this country and around the world, the lightness is there. The giving that is our natural state of, be, of being is there. We give without attachment and expectation. That's giving and helping and assisting each other is actually giving and helping ourselves. Since every one of us, the gods that we are, are one. And we're all operating in this, this material physical world that we created for our own entertainment that we are in but not of. So you start to, it starts to reveal itself. Then you begin to understand I can go into the, the hidden library, the great hall, whenever I choose. I can get all the answers to all my questions that I have ever had, no matter how simple and how small or how large or how deep they are. And as, as you feel that frequency within your heart-mind, because we're all feeling it, and it's always there, sometimes it has much clarity and depth that sometimes you may just hear knowing this on how deeply loving the energy is within that body, deeply loving for oneself. We're not talking about romantic love here. We are talking way beyond that. Spiritual connection, connecting all the gods that we are in these bodies, knowing through our heart minds that we are one. And then you, you start to expand. And you start to really embrace the understanding how powerful you are. So you will say, okay, now, when I focus my attention on happiness, joy, deep gratitude, self-love, right? Appreciation, tenderness, kindness, generosity and humbleness, you're affecting everything around you. You're affecting all the relatives. You're affecting all the strangers. You're affecting your town. You're affecting the city, the state. You're affecting the entire country. You're affecting the entire planet. And you're affecting the solar system. And you're affecting this galaxy. And you're affecting this universe. And you're affecting all the universe that are connected to this universe. And when we all know this, beyond the shadow of a doubt, from the ego mind, because that's where the, the doubt comes from, then the true understanding of humanity and mankind will come front and center. What is our purpose? 
to expand the light and love of the gods that we are in these bodies, to expand it. That's our true mission, all of us, to expand it out throughout this universe. And then it literally does become, starting with this planet, a God planet paradise that is an omnipotently power that is literally pulsing out throughout existence, transforming all the universes, all the star systems, and beyond, and to pure, deep, eternal love. It's our blackboard. It's our white canvas. It's there for us to implement this knowing and understanding. And you know what's interesting about it? We do it every second and we're not conscious about it. If we're angry, frustrated, fearing, guilt-ridden, self-condemning, where does that energy go? Well, first it affects you. Then it affects everything around you. It goes both ways, the yin and the yang. It is becoming consciously aware of this. How to best utilize the power that you are in that body. Do you? We're all powerful, omnipotently so but many have not learned how to direct that power for the highest, the highest of the highest high benefit to existence. But it seems simple, doesn't it? Really, it's not, it's not complicated. We just move out of a habit that we've all been in for eons, and into the habit of knowing who and what we are. That's the difference. And it is a choice that each of us make from our heart-minds. It isn't something that is temporary. When you step through that door within, it's permanent. And it is magnaglorious, spectacular, stupendous, marvelous. The body hums and harmonizes. It is like this massive generator of deep eternal love. And we're putting it out 24-7. Whichever direction, right? Whichever direction. When you're around someone who is genuinely happy and joyous, really, for no catalyst, no reason at all, they just are, how does that affect you? The proof, the proof positive is everywhere. This is how we begin to understand. So any of us that get frustrated and stressed, right? Because that happens around this time of year. It happens all throughout our lives. But it's more intensified this time of year. The gifts, the you know, not being able to afford this, not being able to do this, and all this stuff and the whirling, and the, the kids, and the grandkids, and the, all this stuff, all this material, physical energy. Some people freak out eventually. They lose it, and they start spewing all this stuff around. And that's the ego mind, because it's highly insecure. So we know that. We say, ego mind, you're not in charge here. I love you dearly, but you're not in charge here. And the ego mind steps back. Doesn't mean it keeps it keeps coming. That's what it does. We know that. But eventually, you get yourself into a position where the ego mind no longer affects that, where you're beginning to master the ego mind, and it no longer masters you. This is for all of us to discover in our own way. And as we discover this, it opens up. And the God that we are is revealed. And we know exactly. I focus on deep eternal love that I am. 
joy, happiness, bliss that comes with it, that's part of it, deep eternal peace, gratitude, and a very powerful humbleness, not a meek, not a meek weak, but a very powerful humbleness. And then we send that out like transmitters. All of us are. And what are we doing? We're transmitting to the other gods, the other bodies that the gods are housed in across this planet. This solar system, this galaxy, this universe and beyond. This is what we do. And whether you know it or not, In either direction, the dark or the light, we're doing it 24-7. This is an endless journey. This isn't something that's finished. Okay, we're at the end of the journey. It's all over. It It is an endless journey. What else would we do? Float out in the sacredness of space and just exist? No, we aren't that way. We're constantly creating. And when we say co-creation, it's because we're all part of it. So we're co-creators, cooperative creators, collective creators. That's why one of, one of our, in, in this moment, in this now, uh, as many of us have incarnated on this planet many times, we've all come together. That's what's different about this launch compared to all the other ones. This is a launch into a God planet paradise. This is not a joke. It's not made up. This is what we're doing. As the gods we are in these bodies. And along this way, we are rediscovering who and what we are. And it is parent. All of us see it happening, and we're all part of it. So we begin to choose more and more to be in that higher frequency. No one needs to tell us, all right? No one is ridiculing us, judging us. It is us, the gods that we are. And it's opening. It isn't hidden. Just like the hidden library will no longer be hidden, it will be the great library, right? It'll be when any of us want to ask a question or probe a past life or a future life through the heart-mind, we will be able to do that. And we won't be in fear because it won't be through the ego mind which we will have mastered. And true, deep, eternal peace is the result of that mastering. We have this. It's innate in all of us. It's not something that you're going to learn out of the book. It's, it's just there. So when you see these transmissions or you feel them on a minute to minute, second to second to second, minute to minute basis, it's transforming the planet. It's transforming the atmospheric construct. It's transforming everything. Just remember, energy is never destroyed at all. It just changes form. That's all it does. It's, you can't destroy energy. Energy is energy. Is energy. It is infinity and beyond. You have an energetic explosion. What happens? That energy is transformed into other forms and other directions even in the sacredness of space. And the super exciting thing about it is we've all decided to move forward, to expand. We have eliminated all limitations. There aren't any. It is endless. Our discoveries will continue to transform this planet, this solar system, this galaxy, this universe, and beyond. We're 
melting the self-imposed bondage that we even, we subconsciously or unconsciously have created for ourselves. It's almost as if the the gods that we are, right? We are because of our the illusion of separation. We we've created a field to lock us up so that we can't make the connection. Isn't that wild? And it, it's and we create that so we can discover it and uncreate it. Isn't that wild? It's like this Christmas Day. I can almost guarantee how you felt a year ago compared to how you feel now is a world of difference. Even though we visually look at things that are transpiring on this planet and maybe for just a split second a little bit of fear is there and it's gone the gloriousness of this transformation is unprecedented and we are the gloriousness And we're transmitting this high intensity, very high level frequency of deep, of pure, deep, eternal love for all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond, and forever. So you look at this wave that we're transmitting, right? The God wave all over this planet, saturating everything. Not, not a little bit here, a little bit there. All of it. The sacredness of space. Every molecule, every quantum quark, even down to the orm, transmitting this undulating, endless wave of pure, deep, eternal love across this planet, saturating to its very core of its God, and all knowing that we're one connected as one, emitting this massive wave now. So all of our transmitters form one massive undulating wave that's endless of pure, deep, eternal love. All the children, all, all the little bodies, all the big bodies, all the animals, all the leaves of trees, all the soils, the stars above, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the mountains, everywhere. You can see it through the heart mind and deep eternal peace. It looks different when you see it from the deep eternal love of creation. It's shining and reflecting and glittering. It's like this liquid energy of pure, deep, eternal love. You can feel it. Every molecule, every cell in your biological body is being saturated with it. You can feel it. Right down to your fingertips, your fingernails, your feet, your toes your eyelashes, your ears, everything. It's like you're this huge sparkling and you can hear the power of sizzling and cracking in a total peace, penetrating everything constantly. You can feel the body hum with this power within. It is not coming from outside. It's coming from within the God. Undulating out. And you, you view this. You just close your eyes through the heart and mind. You'll see it. Everybody around you is this super bright light. It is a golden white pink light. It is a 
undulating, reflecting upon itself constantly. And you feel a deep, eternal peace in the very moment. In this very moment, every one of us, a deep, eternal peace. All the fears, all the worries, all the stress melts away. It isn't there. The only thing you can hear is your breath. That's it. And this is a magnificent wave, a perpetual undulating wave of pure, deep, eternal love, flooding everything, saturating and permeating. You see how it feels in your heart mind? You see how it's humming and expanding? You feel the deep peace that you, the God, truly are? We all do. It's absolutely magna glorious. It is, it, it is beyond words, isn't it? We try to make the words, but they're just not there. And so we just wrap around it because we are it. You can visualize this any time during the day. For the rest of Christmas Day, Christmas night, and to the following morning, and you can continually do this for as long as you choose. And I have great faith that we choose eternally. I'll join you in the meditation, and I'll return to close this off.
take an easy and slow breath in through the nose and an easy and slow breath out of the mouth. Keep this vision in your heart minds of the planet, of our brothers and sisters, throughout the rest of this Christmas day into the evening, night, and the following morning. You can visit it anytime you choose. It is up to you to sit with the God that you are and watch this magnificent transition of the people of planet Earth and planet Earth. And love yourselves deeply and stay in deep gratitude. And we will return here December 26, 2022, Monday, to continue our global guided meditation call.